so I get how this works when you have, let's say, Bitcoin and Ethereum or, or two ledgers where you can, you know, escrow money and you have smart contracts and all that stuff. But how would that work if you have something like a bank? Because, I mean, I even if you have the receipt, for example, that you've given out the money as, you know, connected, let's say, on the Bitcoin network, you know, how can I use that to claim something from a connector from a bank? How does this work with banks? Um, uh, banks are banks are very interested in in adopting this. Basically, Ripple's been working with banks for um, two years now, and uh, part of where this where this the idea for this came out of was banks were very interested in Ripple's technology, but said, um, you know, if we're interested in this, we want to see how this scales. Like, can we push? millions of transactions uh, through this per second. Um, and then they were also concerned about privacy on a public ledger. Um, and so uh, as soon as we came out, so they had come to us with those concerns as we were as we were going to them and they were like, yeah, we're very interested in adopting your technology, but we have these two concerns. And then we came out with Interledger and they were like, yes, concerns solved. Um, and so uh, now the, now, Ripple is basically uh, hard at work, um, while I'm here talking to you, um, uh, in implementing this in, in our product suite that we deploy at banks with the idea that, um, not with the idea, with the, the intention that um, banks, banks will have this capability built in so that they'll, they'll be able to recognize these kind of crypto cryptographic conditions um, and trigger the, the movement of funds.